In the early 2000s, whispers spread through the aviation world. One of the first Airbus A320s delivered to China had vanished without a trace. No flights, no passengers, nothing. How could something as massive as an airplane just disappear so easily? Years later, investigators uncovered a shocking truth that same aircraft had been secretly dismantled and reborn under a new name, the C919, China's first homegrown airliner, and a bold challenge to Boeing and Airbus. But there's a twist, despite the hype, almost no airline outside China dares to fly it. Why the truth, as it turns out, is far darker than anyone imagined. The current state of the global aviation industry can be summed up in the absolute dominance of two aircraft families, the Boeing 737 MAX and the Airbus A320neo. These are not only the world's most sought-after narrow-body jets, but also the backbone of airline fleets across every continent from low-cost carriers like Ryanair Southwest Airlines and AirAsia to full-service giants such as American Airlines Lufthansa and China Eastern. This dominance is reinforced by irrefutable numbers, the Boeing 737 MAX 8 and Airbus A320neo, including the A321neo variants together, account for over half of all active and on-order passenger aircraft worldwide. By the end of 2024, their combined order backlog had surpassed 14,000 units, an enormous figure that guarantees steady production well into the next decade. The reason behind this preference lies in their outstanding economic efficiency. Both the 737 MAX and A320neo are equipped with new generation engines that reduce fuel consumption by 15 to 20 percent compared to previous models lower operating costs and extend range enabling airlines to launch transcontinental routes once reserved for wide-body aircraft. For instance, the Airbus A321 XLR can fly non-stop from London to New York, blurring the traditional boundary between narrow-body and wide-body operations. For decades, Boeing and Airbus maintained an unshakable duopoly jointly holding over 90% of the global commercial aircraft market. However, this seemingly invincible balance began to crumble after 2019. The disasters involving the Boeing 737 MAX from the Lion Air to Ethiopian Airlines crashes shook the entire aviation world. What should have been a turning point instead marked the start of Boeing's deepest crisis safety lapses, production chaos, and broken quality control. The 2024 Alaska Airlines door blowout became the final straw exposing systemic flaws in manufacturing and management. The FAA soon stepped in, forcing Boeing to slow production and halt deliveries of several 737 MAX variants. Deliveries plummeted, worsening a global jet shortage, just as airlines scrambled to expand after the pandemic. Airbus, though ahead, couldn't fill the gap either. Supply chain issues and engine shortages for the A320neo and 737 MAX throttled output. Today, airlines face unprecedented delays, some waiting up to eight years for new narrow-body jets. Therefore, this weakened bipolar structure opened the door for a potential third solution from Beijing. China believes it holds the key to breaking the monopoly. The Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, or COMAC, developed the C919, a narrow-body jet designed to compete directly with the Boeing 737 MAX and Airbus A320neo. Although many of its components and engines are still imported from the West, primarily Honeywell Avionics and CFM International Leap Engines, the C919's entry into commercial service with China, Eastern Airlines in 2023 sent a powerful message to the world. With massive state financial backing and access to a huge domestic market, COMAC has set its sights on a long-term goal to secure a meaningful share of the global market. Chinese airlines have already placed thousands of orders for the C919, and as Boeing's troubles continue, Beijing's determination to turn the jet into a viable and regionally favored alternative, particularly across the Asia-Pacific, grows stronger, posing a direct challenge to the decades-long dominance of the Western giants. However, behind it lies a plane shrouded in mysteries that words can hardly describe. Everything changed when Alain Jouillet, former head of strategic intelligence at France's DGSE, appeared and revealed a shocking truth. For the first time, he publicly claimed that China's supposedly homegrown C919 was in fact a meticulous copy of the Airbus A320, dismantled, studied, and then recreated piece by piece. In the documentary France-China The Secret War, Jouillet recounted a dramatic episode in the early 2000s one of the first A320 jets sold to China suddenly disappeared. It vanished from radar with no trace of any flight operations. French engineers were stunned a nearly $100 million aircraft had simply evaporated. No records, no flight data, nothing. It became known as a ghost plane. This disappearance was no accident. It was deliberate marking the beginning of a large-scale, highly organized reverse engineering campaign. Patrick DeVoe, former vice president for economic intelligence at Airbus, confirmed that the A320 had been completely dismantled at a secret facility in China. 
The sole objective to copy as much as possible, understand every component, and recreate them exactly. It was an engineering autopsy of the most radical kind. Chinese engineers conducted in-depth studies dismantling mechanical parts, analyzing material structures, and even X-raying complex electronic systems from the wings and fly-by-wire controls to the landing gear and cockpit. The goal was to produce a complete technical blueprint of the A320, understanding how every part interacted. DeVoe pointed out the astonishing similarities between the C919 and the A320, the clearest evidence of replication. This process allowed COMAC to dramatically shorten its R&D timeline, fast-tracking the development of a narrow-body aircraft comparable to its European rival. By 2021, nearly 20 years after the mysterious disappearance, the ghost plane was reportedly found abandoned in a field in Jiangsu province, a silent witness to a completed reverse engineering mission. However, despite the seemingly convincing accusations, Airbus has consistently denied or remained silent on the matter. These direct allegations from former intelligence and Airbus officials have exposed the dark side of the market share battle raising serious intellectual property concerns. Yet Airbus's reaction has been one of diplomatic pragmatism. DeVoe explained that the underlying reason was geopolitical and commercial reality that confronting China head-on would bring no real benefit. He stated bluntly, put yourself in the shoes of the Airbus CEO or the French foreign minister. Would saying you stole our plane actually help? This silence reflects the painful balance between protecting intellectual property and preserving billion-dollar trade relations. China is the world's largest single-aisle aircraft market, and Airbus operates a completion and delivery center CDC in Tianjin. Accusing China of theft could jeopardize that operation and risk being pushed out of the market altogether. Thus, Airbus appears to have accepted a certain level of copying risk in exchange for market access turning strategic silence into the ultimate form of economic defense. It needs to be clear that despite the striking similarities, the C919 is not a complete clone, as it still relies heavily on Western technology, particularly for critical systems such as engines and avionics. Nevertheless, if the story of the ghost plane is true, and the uncanny similarity in design between the Chinese aircraft and the Airbus clearly shows that China has been willing to use every possible strategy to accelerate its localization process. Notably, the FBI has charged several Chinese engineers and former employees of major aerospace companies like GE Aviation for stealing jet engine trade secrets. These cases further strengthen allegations that technology theft and replication form part of Beijing's long-term aviation development strategy. Despite Comac's enormous effort to challenge the Western giants, the company has yet to sell a single C919 outside China, not one international customer. This seems almost unbelievable, especially at a time when Airbus and Boeing are drowning in massive backlogs and airlines worldwide are desperate for new aircraft. If you place an order for a 737 MAX or A320neo today, you'll wait over a decade before delivery pushing carriers into an increasingly urgent search for alternatives. At first glance, the C919 seems like a success with over 1,000 orders from 24 customers, but a closer look reveals a different truth. 23 of those customers are Chinese airlines or leasing firms all state-owned, including Comac itself. In other words, China is both the manufacturer and the buyer, with purchases largely directed by the government. So why hasn't a single foreign airline, not even a small one in Asia or Africa, dared to try the C919? The answer lies in four critical issues that go far beyond government control. The first and most fundamental challenge is performance. The harsh reality is that the C919 simply cannot compete in range or fuel efficiency. Despite its modern aerodynamic design, 91% of its components are supplied by foreign manufacturers, and those Western suppliers wary of technology theft have only provided older generation systems, not their latest innovations. This has created what analysts call a limited performance version of a modern airliner. The Leap 1C engine on the C919, for example, may sound similar to the one used on the 737 MAX and A320neo, but according to a Forbes investigation, it's a downgraded model more akin in internal structure to the 1970s-era CFM-56. As a result, its fuel efficiency is 10-15% to 15 worse than its competitors. The C919's actual range of 4075 to 5555 kilometers falls far short of the A320neo's 6300 kilometers and the 737 MAX 8's 6584 kilometers, limiting it to domestic or short regional routes and making it unattractive to global airlines. Another major obstacle is reliability and global supply chain support. Boeing and Airbus have spent decades building vast, dependable networks of suppliers, maintenance hubs, and spare parts centers across the world. 
Comac, by contrast, relies heavily on imported components from Liebherr landing gear and Honeywell flight controls to Western-made avionics, making it vulnerable on two fronts. First, U.S. sanctions have placed Comac on a trade blacklist due to links with China's military sector restricting access to key technologies and funding. Second, even if it can secure the parts, Comac lacks a global maintenance infrastructure, a critical factor for airline operations. No airline wants to buy an aircraft that can't be serviced easily. A carrier in Africa, for instance, would never risk operating a plane without nearby certified maintenance centers or spare parts depots. Without them, even a minor fault can ground the aircraft indefinitely. The contrast is stark Chinese military aircraft like the JF-17 have faced repeated reliability issues abroad, while the F-16 supported by a global maintenance network has remained operational for decades. For commercial airlines, technical reliability and after-sales support are non-negotiable, and this is where COMAX still falls dramatically short. Then comes the issue of production capacity. Despite China's reputation as the world's factory building, a commercial jetliner is a vastly more complex process requiring rigorous certification and quality control. Since starting production in 2011, Comac has completed only 10 to 15 C919s by the end of 2024, averaging fewer than two per year. The contrast with its Western rivals is staggering. Boeing and Airbus each produce 50 to 60 narrow-body jets per month, more than one aircraft every day. Even if Comac achieves its ambitious goal of ramping up to 7 units per year by 2024 and 150 per year by 2030, it would still take over a decade to deliver just its domestic backlog far too slow for airlines that need aircraft immediately. The sluggish output underscores the company's immature assembly lines and undeveloped quality control systems, making it an unreliable supplier in the eyes of international carriers. Finally, the most decisive barrier lack of international safety certification. To operate outside China, the C919 must obtain approval from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, the Global Gold Standards of Airworthiness. So far, the jet has only been certified by China's Civil Aviation Administration, CAAC. Without FAA or EASA certification, the C919 is banned from flying in U.S., Canadian, European, and many allied airspaces effectively excluding it from the world's most profitable routes. For airlines leasing firms and insurers, these agencies' approval is a non-negotiable mark of safety and reliability. The absence of it makes financing leasing and insuring the aircraft nearly impossible. Across all four dimensions, performance, reliability, production capacity, and certification. This Chinese aircraft remains a non-competitive choice for international airlines. COMEX's path forward is clear, but steep, as long as it depends on outdated technology, state-driven orders, and limited regulatory recognition. Boeing and Airbus will continue to hold their unshakable monopoly over the global commercial aviation industry. What do you think can Comac ultimately challenge the West? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you and fly safe.